everybody, Jim Lee from Climate Viewer and Resonated.net, Resonated.com, uh, with a big update on hurricane modification. There's a lot of uh, stuff floating around the internet lately about weather modification and uh, people calling uh, you know people out for being conspiracy theorists for saying that they're screwing with a hurricane. Well, this is a little close to my heart, so I'm gonna. I'm going to really break it down for you. I spent two days making these two articles because people don't seem to get it and hopefully this video will explain it. You know, the only thing people know about weather modification and is what they learned in why in the world are they spraying. And that video told you a whole bunch of interesting things but it didn't tell you who. I would like to know who is spraying. But let's get to that in just a minute. So, um if you don't believe in weather modification then you just got your head in the sand because they've been doing it for quite a while and I'm gonna break down exactly how the Department of Homeland Security NOAA, NASA, the US Air Force, the National Weather Service everybody, the CDC, the EPA um, let's see who else, the farmers, the insurance companies, the NADEX, how it's all involved and we're going to go over that hopefully as quickly as possible so please stay tuned because this is very 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 important this is a book uh, dated 2009 called Land Strike where he talks about a hurricane hitting New York pretty much the way things happen of course we didn't have any bridges tear up like that and it's supposed to be kind of a scary they call it a gripping story the guy, you know, never even mentioned weather modification one time in it. I mean, if I was going to write a scary story knowing what I know, I would really, you know, chum it up. Uh, but, you know, no mention of weather modification. So, you know, I went through Hurricane Hugo, 1990, or, uh, 89. There was a Category 4, 135 mile an hour wind, second strongest hurricane since records began in 1851 to hit the U.S. East Coast north of Florida. And I'm going to tell you, man, when that thing came through, I was real young. Um, it leveled the place. You know, it was a disaster area. Uh, you know, it took us two weeks to clear roads. Me, my father, and my brother with chainsaws. We spent day and night clearing roads for people, trying to get old people out of their homes. You know, they were elderly. They just can't get around. Um, you know, it's extraordinary what people will do. And, you know... Um, anyway, that being said, I, I know that the guys up in New York are going through hell and gals and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about you. So, um, hurricane modification started in 1960 with Project Storm Fury. Um, you know, now I could get into the details, but it's all here in the article. It's going to be the link in the details. So I'm going to try to just get through this as fast as possible so that you understand the big picture. Because if I get um, trapped on the details, we'll be here for 25 videos. Um, so here's the interesting stuff on hurricane seeding. This has been Livingston, Father Weaponized Weather. He did um, Project Storm Fury along with the Ho Chi Minh Trail um, weather modification stuff. and Very interesting video. Um, take the time to watch that. Hurricane Katrina 2005. Um, the university military industrial complex got their way in the Department of Homeland Security Commission studies to divert or diminish hurricanes. Hurricane Modification Workshop was initiate, initiated by Undersecretary Jay Cohen, DNA, um, D, DHS, uh, s &T, to investigate the possibility of minimizing the tremendous loss of life, property, and economic stability by reducing the destructive forces of a hurricane. This may be accomplished by modifying its track, speed, winds, or, or rain. One more time. This may be accomplished by modifying its track, throwing it off course, speeds, wind, and rain, diminishing its capacity to destroy crap. Here is a video that shows the DHS and ESRL workshop in Boulder. Um, ESRL is the Earth Systems Research uh, Laboratory, and I believe that's NASA ESRL. If you hop over to uh, Climate Viewer, what you're going to see is currently up on the map. This is climateviewer.com slash earth. You're going to see weather modification programs. Um, the clouds and stuff are uh, Weather Modification Association. 
the big dots these are the NASA ESRL and there's a whole lot of them guys they've been you know they, they study the weather so that they can learn how to manipulate it so that they can make it you know or you know of course for predictive you know reasons as well but it's it's about knowing how once you understand how it works then you can modify it and that's their intention it's clear with the Air Force 2025 documents along with a slew of other um, things interesting quote in this um, video carbon black may increase the intensity of hurricanes carbon black may increase the intensity of hurricanes some of you chemtrail guys have never heard of carbon black do your freaking research um, hurricane geoengineering discussions at the American Meteorological Society Monday uh, 2008 uh, April 21st this is uh, Joe Golden from the University of Colorado and uh, the first video up is Bernard Eastland and uh, Jay, uh, Lyle Jenkins talking on behalf of Bernard Eastland. Bernard Eastland made HARP. This is called Atmospheric Research Heating Tool. We're going to get to that in a minute. Video below, as you can see here. Um, another discussion uh, reducing hurricane intensity by cooling the upper mixed layer using arrays of at motion inks, wave driven upwelling pumps. These are like buoys that are in the ground, in the water. They like suck the water from the ocean and spray it up into the um into the hurricane to supposedly mitigate um you know the damage interestingly enough there is also another project this is i'm digressing but i want to get it out there bill gates silver lining project um i just put the videos up on my youtube as well um, for that where they use boats out in the pacific ocean to spray uh ocean water into the clouds doing cloud uh, albedo whitening so whitening for geoengineering purposes to reflect uh, sunlight let's let's continue on on engineering hurricanes uh, by William R cotton remember that name William R cotton Fort Collins Colorado State University and he kind of giggles about um <laughs> about making hurricanes he's like this isn't a controversial topic or anything <laughs> so um Let's continue on. Then finally, a machine to get rid of hurricanes, and it's like a, a device that goes in there. It can like disrupt the wind flow and tear it to pieces, supposedly. Um, anyway, the senior official responsible for science and technology at the Department of Homeland Security, Jay Cohen, has given his support to the new hurricane reduction program, which is expected to receive funding in October for the first phase of research. The project has been given an estimated price tag of around $64 million over six years. Scientists will first conduct tests using models and small-scale experiments before the most promising idea is developed for large-scale testing. This is 2008, all right? That's from Telegraph. Moving on, large-scale testing. Hurricane Aerosol and Microphysics Program, HAMP 2010. Now, you may have seen this on a whole bunch of activist videos uh, talking about uh, Sandy and geoengineering, and, and this is how it all started. But you know, let me give you the full scoop. <sighs> Coffee. The HAMP program did all kinds of stuff uh, as far as, you know, testing with cloud seeding, um, and you know various instrumentation once again chairperson William R Cotton the on engineering hurricanes guy that we just previously discussed this is 2010 that's two years after the last video that was up there so Joe Golden from Golden Research Consulting who all is involved in HAMP this is the HAMP report to the Department of Homeland Security 2010, and here's the original link. It's on pwtcommunications.com. And this is from the American Meteorological so Society, the AMA, uh, Confex website. Freaking awesome. Um, here's who talked at the HAMP program, and I just found this interesting. Somebody, um, Harold Save from Chemtrail Planet uh, on YouTube pointed this out, and uh, it's, it is kind of interesting. Hurricane uh, Aerosol Microphysics Program, a HAMP contribution by Joe Golden, Boulder, Colorado, and then Alexander P. Kane, Khan, the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. Then whether it is LTD, Israel. Jacob Schmund, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. Hebrew University, 
Hebrew University, back to Colorado. So Golden, Colorado, and Israel getting it on for the HAMP program. Pretty cool. And then this right here, or uh, here's two videos from that where they talk um, in detail about the HAMP program. And then finally, a PDF from uh, weathermodification.org slash park city presentation slash DC program review. So DC program review on weathermodification.org. Um, and then there's your uh, cotton and uh, et al. Future plans endorsed by the May panel review may test additional hypotheses on intensity change factors. Carbon frickin' black. I want to. I'm gonna keep pointing this out. You got to see the big picture, guys. Ocean cooling. That's the little, you know, barrels I was talking about. And um, same thing with silver lining projects, spraying water in the air. Ya da da. Same year, same time. NASA Genesis and Rapid Intensification Processes uh, Experiments. This is the NASA GRIP program 2010. And uh, you can see that here. GRIP. They show the little UAVs that they used and all the studies they did on the hurricanes. So here's their drone. It is a Global Hawk. And it's got a Hamzer high altitude mimic sounding radiometer, a high wrap, which is a high altitude imaging wind and radio profiler. Anyway, it's a big, you know, robot to do measurements. And they got a heads up display in it and everything. And of course, they probably did a whole lot of cloud seeding during this. But the interesting part is what Ed Zipser said Hurricane formation and intensification is really the holy grail of this field. Hurricane formation. And intensification is the holy grail for this field. They want to know how they start and how they get big. Holy grail. And of course they're going to say is so that they can learn how to stop that process. But understand because of the Air Force 2025 documents, we all know that the Air Force intends to weaponize weather. So let them get their holy grail, and somebody's going to be visited by a hurricane brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Continuing on. <clears throat> 2011 at the AMA. Here's where they talk about more screwing with hurricanes. Aerosols on the intensity and genesis of hurricanes. Mitigation of hurricanes by cloud seeding. Aerosol, cold pools, and hurricane intensity modulation. Real as rain, people. You can't argue with the truth. Now we move to the next category, and this is a little more controversial. Um, HARP, satellites, and hurricanes. Oh, my. Uh, Nikola Tesla's wireless transmission of electricity. Bernard Eastland, creator of HARP, envisioned pumping natural gas from the ground, converting it to an electrical signal, and broadcasting that energy to an aircraft carrier, plane, or military base over the horizon. More on this in the next part. So let's. And here's the video that they did at the AMA, where they describe how you make an artificial ionospheric mirror. Actually, Mr. Jenkins really isn't that familiar with it because Bernard Eastland died a year before they had this meeting. So Mr. Jenkins goes on to say, I really don't understand how to make a mirror. Lucky for you people, I do. Pretty sad, actually, that he didn't know. So, operational analysis of Air Force 2025, an application of value-focused thinking to the future and cap of space capabilities. Now, what they're going to talk about right here is this. They put satellites in space that beam energy down, that either that heats one side of a, a storm. If they can heat a proper side of the storm they can kill it or if they eat the other side obviously they can make it worse but if you got a whole bunch of chemicals up there like carbon black and other metal um, chemtrails you know persistent contrails included which NASA um, fully recognizes that those do affect the weather um, when you combine all this together if, if you have a satellite up there beaming electricity down uh, we have a, it's a whole new ball game but for everybody who's curious 
is there any truth to this? In 1996, the Air Force said they want to make it. And we all know that the military gets what they want. So, solar-powered high-energy laser system, possible application and weather modification. Solar energy optical weapon could potentially be used for weather modification. Space-based high-energy laser system provide limited weather modification capability. Space-based high-power microwave weapon provide limited and weather limited weather modification capability. Hybrid high-energy laser system. Ground laser sites, uh, no, here, has counter space, counter air, force application, and weather modification uses. And this is from PressCorps.ca. I don't know the, um, you know, reliability of the site, but interestingly enough, in 2010, around the same time as the GRIP program, they're talking about satellites heated the cloud tops by beaming microwaves from space. You know they want to. And there's a patent for it. Is it real? You know they want to. There's a patent dated 1999, I believe. Yeah, ni November 16, 1999. Modify established local avenue weather conditions at discrete time and location. Sp special desired weather request at time and location. Okay, so guy calls in and says, hey, I need this thing turned this way. Desired weather, energy beam. Energy mean characteristics, desired local weather at discrete location. So you call them up, you say, I want this weather. The, the Air Force weather weapon system calls a satellite. It heats. You'll see the picture in just a second. Let's, get, let's continue on. Solar Power Satellite Project, 1968. This was defeated because in the end, they decided that these monster satellites in space would just be too crazy. This was supposed to be a solar panel in space that would collect the energy from the sun, beam it down to rectennas. What is HARP? HARP is a rectenna, people. HARP is a rectenna from SPS. More on that in a second. This is um, over at the propagation.georgiatech.edu death ray orp. Now this is a, a like a gag website where I guess they did like a you know a paper on you know, potentially building an SBS, you really should read through it. It's great stuff. But here's his uh, artist rendering of what the beam coming down from an SPS would look like. Death Ray Orp. Even the guys at Georgia Tech had to throw Raytheon <laughs> under the bus for that one. So, and in here is the climatological and heating effects of microwave power transmission systems in the lower atmosphere. When they tried to get the SPS built, um, they did a study, and this is at agree.net and hydrogen uh, satellite hydrogen energy. So this is a from a website for some people who are pushing to actually build a new SPS, but you know they want to say that it's okay. But here you can see rectenna heat. That's harp causes. See the arrow weather modification. Weather modification by variation in refractive index, beam wandering, spreading, beam control instability, ground heating, and soil moisture evaporation, which leads to weather modification, all of which lead to climate modification. Pretty important. So, continuing on to part two. Raytheon lobbying government agencies and companies to come to a consensus on weather modification. This is on the weather modifications website. Let's open this PDF. A plan for the next phase in weather modification science and technology development. And at the top it says WMA annual meeting. WMA is the Weather Modification Association. San Diego, California 2005. This is the year that all the DHS stuff started. Okay, Katrina happened in in um, in 2005. The DHS said we need to prevent this from ever happening again. Raytheon goes to the Weather Modification Association. This paper describes how they want to get it on. You should read this. This is your freaking big smoking gun. Now I cut out the interesting parts for you over here in the article. Here's their program organizational chart. 
and the plan and and they could form the basis for Homeland Security's needs. 2005, Raytheon talking about it, we can do what Homeland Security needs. The state of the art cloud seeding technologies might be ready for application towards mitigating the F effects of freezing rain events. The knowledge base is not large enough to reliably support tornado zapping or hurricane snuffing efforts. Now, tornado zapping is what I just told you about with, this, with the, the solar power satellites. That's Bernard Eastland's technology you know, that they're trying to get revitalized. Um, where, and they're saying that it's not, re, the reliability is not there yet. But that doesn't mean that it isn't there. Okay? Um, they're just a, a, acknowledging that part. So let me continue. It may uh, one day support these efforts after appropriately funded and dis directed cooperative research campaigns have been completed. This is 2005. You think they ain't got the money by now? You're crazy. It's been seven years, guys. Um, the existing cloud seeding technologies are operationally used to reduce hail size, hailstone size, and may possibly be used to reduce the intensity of rotational hurricane winds. The reductions in hurricane rotational wind speeds following, following cloud seeding were not statistically distinguishable from the range of natural variability and is not yet scientifically accepted. Consequently, modeling studies should dominate these efforts initially. So they're saying get your computer model on. Let's figure out exactly where we need to seed and then let's do that. And then potential customers, big, big smoking gun alert right here. Pay attention. Program customers for Raytheon, the U.S. Air Force, and the, and the Weather Modification Association members. Corporate roster link is in the article. Farmers, crop insurance industry. That's who they list first because they are the biggest ones in the whole game. They insure their crops, and you know if the weather if the weather goes crazy, then they get their money back. And some some farmers out there will insure a one million dollar crop for three million dollars, and then pray it doesn't rain, which kind of gives people a reason not to make it rain. Just saying. So. Farmers, crop insurance industry, water district managers, utility industry, relevant organizations, WMA, Weather Modification Association, Environmental and Water Resources Institute, Scientific Community and Governmental Agencies, NOAA, EPA, NASA, DOD, CDC, Foreign. Program customers, all right? Let me go over to big ones again. WMA, NOAA, EPA, NASA, DOD, CDC, foreign question mark? Foreign question mark? Uh, anticipated sources of funding, farmer groups, indus insurance industry, water districts, utility industry, um, state governments, NOAA Congress, and others such as the Office of Federal Coordination for Meteorology. Yeah, that's where they're going to get their money. So they, you don't need any, I don't really need to say anything else about that. But here's all, all the details are in this beautiful, beautiful PDF. Moving on. Do we know what HARP is? Because some of you guys think you know about HARP, but you really don't. And you really need to do the research and, and, and watch your mouth about what you say online. Because there are people starting to wake up to this stuff. And I'm about blue in the face from seeing you half-witted toolboxes out there telling people you know what's going on with this thing. Because this is important. Don't screw it up. Connecting the dots. Raytheon, AMS, Lockheed Martin, HARP, NOAA, General Dynamics. This is at Geoengineering Watch. Again, this is Harold Saves website. I found some really interesting info here, and I'm inclined to believe what I'm reading right here, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> yeah, so let's get back to it. This is from the Air Force 2025 documents, the Global Weather Network. Um, this is on page 9 from that. And what you see here is GWN, Global Weather Network, feeds data to weather force support element. Gets that data gets passed over to the command the commanders in charge, who send it back with two WX mod options. 
WX mod means weather. WX means weather. Mod modification. WX mod options. So comes from the Global Weather Network. Goes to this dude, Bradley Manning. Sends it over to the gov the the powers that be that make all the decisions. They send it back. Say here's how we want to modify the weather. Then that gets passed over to the Air Ops Center, who then employs weather modification tools. As you can see here, uh, ground-based. Are those lightning bolts? That looks like microwaves, people. Um, <laughs> there's a plane here, and then, of course, we got F-117s. What the hell are they doing in there? And then, finally, cause and effect. Bam. That looks like China to me. <laughs> I could be wrong. So, <laughs> weather gets modified. Feedback we see it on the Global Weather Network. That's how it works. This is how they described it working in the Air Force 2025 documents. But then if you continue on and you read the last paper in that whole series, an operational analysis of Air Force 2025, an application of value-focused thinking to the future of space capabilities, you'll see this. Global Information Management System. And this is where they want to be, where basically everything you type online every sensor on the net for you know next reds and you know satellite imagery barometric pressure buoys seismic you know space weather um, then everything you type online every single thought you have they want all of that into one big network where they can make decisions you know on mass well they also want the weather analysis and modification system a global network of sensors provided provides weather warriors with the means to monitor and accurately predict weather activities and their efforts on military operations a diverse set of weather modification tools allows manipulation of small to medium scale weather phenomena to enhance friendly force capabilities and degrade those of the adversary many of the sensors required for this system are assumed to be external i.e. part of the global information management system discussed in 8.1 global information management system 8.1 talking about this thing and all of those when they say external or assumed to be external that's next rads that's dopplers that's you know super darn that's harp that's Jamarca, uh, Jika Marka, that's ear tusk that's all of the, the big ones China sea rip um, Japan's got one. These things are everywhere. And you know what? They have data sharing agreements with the with America. It goes to Unidata. It all flows into their current global weather network tool. It's called the Joint Environmental Toolkit. It's made by Raytheon. It goes to the Air Force Weather Weapon System, a Java Google Earth based integrated data viewer. I'm calling it IDV because that's the Unidata IDV. Pretty cool. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The Joint Environmental Toolkit for the Air Force Weather Weapon System. Here's the original link. It's on AFCEABoston.com. Go through it in detail. Here's their branch systems. And here's the JET itself. Joint Environmental Toolkit provides all of the sensors that they have available into one integrated, replaces disparate legacy weather systems with a single integrated capacity, capability. Okay, so let me get this straight. That sounds just like this. Okay, so all of the sensors have come together. Great times, guys. Great times. We're getting progress here. Oddly enough, it looks a lot like my climate viewer. It's a Google Earth program with uh, real-time data like weather and barometric pressure and wind. I started making climate viewer two months before I learned about JET. And when I learned about it, it just put the biggest smile on my face because I was like, I made that. Oh, You guys should check out climate viewer. Get over there and try it out. Um... Moving on, who owns a uh, Harp? Raytheon owns Harp. It's managed by the Air Force Research Lab, the Office of Naval Research, DARPA, and the Stanford VLF Group. Well, that and both Raytheon and the guys—they 
they make it real obvious, you know. On the Weather Modification Association's corporate roster, scroll down here, you're going to see NASIC, DACA, Gregory T. Marks, Watson Way, Wright Patterson Air Force Base. All right. Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Who runs HARP? The Air Force Research Lab, which is where? Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Just saying. So those are that's that's one link. You got the Weather Modification Association, corporate roster, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Air Force Research Lab, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and then this. You got the Department of Homeland Security, Hurricane Mitigation, and HARP all in one shot. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, guys. So what do you think about that? Because for me, that's kind of troubling. Why is HARP up there in a thing that says identification of variable hurricane mitigation hypothesis that warrant further study? You know, let's, let's get into this, you know, you're talking about weather modification here. It's the Department of Frickin' Homeland Security, and there's HARP. <laughs> there's HARP. Making me nervous. So what is HARP? I got this book, and you can read it online. It's Margaret Cheney's Tesla Man Out of Time. And the PDFs that are online do not have what the book actually has. Because in the preface of the book, there's this paragraph, and it, set, it sums it up better than anything you ever heard in your life from anybody, Nick Begich or any of those guys. Um, though I like his stuff. Though I like his stuff. Tesla's basic idea was revisited by Atlantic Richfield's oil company's consultant physicist, Bernard Eastland, who sought a less expensive way to transmit natural gas to, from remote areas, he proposed a pipeline in the sky, a natural gas to power microwave transmitters. The microwaves would be sped great distances through the ionosphere, then beamed down to satellites and converted to electric power on Earth. Now, guys, that's some creepy shit to begin with, but honestly, they, you know, that's what they're talking about here. He goes on to say in this video, it's the only copy of it on the internet other than the Confex website. I converted it just my, just yesterday. Um, Rectenna on Earth. All right, antenna on Earth. There's Harp. Rectenna on ISS. Power Earth to ISS 2008. What was in 2008? The, uh, that was right before the HAMP program. And they're talking about, oh, let's let's get this bad boy powered up. You know, shooting electricity from HARP to the ISS and storing it up there. And then he goes on to say, power ISSS to Earth in 2009. So wait, do you guys have a SPS or not? Because now I'm starting to really get nervous. Do you have a freaking, you know, real genius, Val Kilmer movie? laser in the sky that you can shoot at the freaking ground because that makes me nervous not to mention it's probably illegal but um everything is lining up here guys you got laser beams from the sky laser beams from harp you know the the sky is the limit here and let me continue on this is 1997 weather modification potential weather modification capabilities from Air Force 2025. They even list them right here. Things like denying fresh water, inducing drought. This is what the Air Force wants to do. Do you guys approve of this? Would you be cool with, you know, even if we're, at, you know, unless, I, I mean, I'm, 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 on the, I'm on the fence just like you guys. You know, I don't want my country to be destroyed and I want us to have everything that we could possibly do to protect us. But this is just over the line. Just over the line. All right, after a short break and a full cup of coffee, uh, a little more calm down, actually. And let's get back to this. So, yeah, this is kind of crazy, what they intend to do with weather. Here you see harp, cloud seeding, the good old ways, weather modification using carbon black. 
Carbon black, guys. There you go. Why would they want to do it? Cloud modification, surveillance, coverage, hole boring, create, suppress, cirrus, contrails. Create, cirrus, suppress, cirrus. Create contrails, suppress contrails. Hole boring. Interesting. Ionospheric modification. These are uh, current capabilities. That's what it says there. Current capabilities. Targeted fog dispersal. Local changes in precipitation. Ionospheric modification. This is 97. Harp was built in 94. So yeah, they could do all that then. Carbon black. Then you see here operational defenses through weather control in 2030 where they talk about making cloud cover to protect against directed energy weapons that are space based. As well, in addition to satellite um, imagery. So they want to cover the sky in blankets of clouds to protect against lasers and microwave weapons on satellites like SPS. So are they implying that the other governments already have them? This is saying that they need to be able to do it by 2030 because they will have them at the very least. Um, weather, can, weather is a force multiplier owning the weather in 2025 again. We see here uh, systems development roadmap for weather modification 2025. This is all current stuff. This was dated 1996. And it says here 2005 carbon black dust. CBD. Come down here. It says CBD. Carbon black dust. So in 2005 that was Hurricane Katrina. Are you telling me that that's when you guys started doing it? Hmm? Just a coincidence. Things they can do now. 1996 directed energy. Laser microwave. Artificial ionospheric mirrors. That's HARP and the Mirage project. Smart clouds. Nanotechnology. Creepy. Chemicals. Chemtrails and cloud seeding with aerospace delivery vehicles, drones and planes. The Global Weather Network. Um, we already talked about that. Sensors, computer modeling, communications. They've got that. Carbon black dust since 2005. So you may be asking yourself, what is an artificial ionospheric mirror? Now, a whole lot of people have talked about this if you watched any HARP videos, but most of them didn't know what they were talking about. So I did this little graphic. This is straight from the patent. Artificial ionospheric, mir ionospheric mirror composed of a plasma layer, which can be tilted. And basically, they, they heat a section of uh, plasma in the sky to make a mirror that radio signals can bounce off of. Now, that has many purposes which is described here where you can see them bouncing a signal off and it's being received somewhere else or they back it you know bounce a tracking radar to see over the horizon and see a target they normally wouldn't be able to see but in addition the mirror itself creates alvin waves alvn and uh, elf waves these are ripples that are generated um, off the side of them they radiate all the way around the world due to what's known as the schumann resonance um, this is what people talk about when they say elf waves. Elf wave generation is used for um, talking to submarines deep under the water. Um, for those who say that HARP doesn't have very far of a reach, it can't reach here or there, know that they have a buoy um, just east of Australia that they use to track the signals from HARP, and it's called the One Hop Experiments by Stanford. Um, but they can actually see the, the signal bounce around the world down there, no problem. Here's another um, diagram on that. This uh, Papadopoulos Dennis, he says, AMISR to be re relocated from Poker Flat to Harp. Arecibo gets a heater. Make the heater to be constructed at Gicamarca to cover the dip equator. All right, so let's take a look at those real quick. Now what I'm going to do is on Climate Viewer, I'm going to go to Locations and Facilities, and I'm going to check the electromagnetic box. And then we'll come over here to Arecibo. And I'm going to turn 3D models on as well. You just click this box here and check this box and bam. Pretty cool. Now that's Arecibo. You've seen this in James Bond and a whole lot of other movies. Well, it was destroyed by a hurricane, and they've been remodeling it, and apparently they're putting an ionospheric heater here as well. It's also a member of the VLBA, which is the Very Long Baseline Array, which uh, spans the globe. And then let's go out to Gicamarca real quickly.
And G. Camarca looks a lot like Harp. It is a Rectenna. And it is very large. And it is set in a mountain range. Pretty cool. So they want to build another heater here. Even though they've got one, and then they've got a, um, a rheometer over here, um, and a bunch of other instruments, but that's Chica Marca Peru. And then Harp is right here. And these are 72 foot tall antennas with trailers. That's a trailer, like a tractor trailer. That's how big that those are. And those power these antennas. And each one is shaped like a plus. It's a dipole antenna, and it radiates power into the air. And as you can see, the satellite image only shows you half of it. So I've marked where everything is here. You can come in and click these, and it'll tell you all about them. And then the AMISR is over here at Poker Flats currently, at least on my documentation. But they're saying that they moved this bad boy to... um. To harp now so this is what it looks like it's like a baby harp but um apparently this may be at the harp facility so things have changed and you know I'm trying to keep up with it but it's kind of hard to keep up with it when there's no transparency so let's move on then now again this video from uh, Lyle Jenkins uh, talking about Bernard Eastland's satellite power technology it also discovered um, briefly discusses a plasma pattern atmospheric heating for a plasma pattern which is an artificial ionospheric mirror many people talk about this little understand it so I'm gonna make it real simple for you there are two ways to make one one is with a cross beam pattern you have a heater which does the heating of the atmosphere and then you have a second radar that does the modulation of the frequencies in that area so one heats the area the other controls the area the two together make an, an ionospheric mirror and you can see there that it's typically 30 to 70 kilometers above the earth um, here's what that looks like central spot ring around it ring central spot vertical displacements about 50 kilometers so it's about 50 kilometers tall and a big round ring um, pretty neat this is called a um, it's a, it's a form of air glow uh, it's a transluminous event um, they study uh, lots of that stuff with harp um, they're called uh, sprites and elves and the like um, they're looking for when you ionize gases up in the air you know what has, happens as a result but anyway pictures of that there the other way that you can make an ionospheric mirror is with a high power microwave and a rocket with rocket chaff this is called the microwave ionospheric reconfiguration ground based emitter this is a uh, 2006 Air Force aims to for weather control um, and it says Mirage would employ a microwave transmitter on the ground and a small rocket that shoots chaff into the air to produce about a liter of plasma at 60 to 100 kilometers that's 36 to 60 miles in the air changing the number of electrons in a select area of the ionosphere to create a virtual barrier and this is describing the exact same thing that harp does so except for mirage is portable and it can fit in the back of a truck here's an article um, from defense technologies magazine that cuts that out and and it describes just that it's a baby harp that can be used to make um, produce a 20 liter plasma there you go there's your barrier and what do they do with that? They bounce signals like off B, U.S. Navy Rother, Super Darn, maybe possibly Nexrad, um, off of that to do, um, you know, over the horizon communications, possibly weather modification. Um, finally, we have the NASA videos on inadvertent uh, cloud seeding, modification of marine and supercooled stratocumulus. Um, this is for everybody talking about commercial airliners and chemtrails, commercial aircraft inadvertent cloud seeding. Um, I have all of these videos up on my YouTube as well, all four of these. So check that out. Now, the only question left is what does any of this have to do with Hurricane Sandy? Well, everything. Um, 
here's a little bit on that uh, predicted. Uh, people have talked about this, so I just included this because it's in the discussion. Um, but we're going to focus on the facts. So I don't know exactly what these are, and I'm sure somebody will tell you that these are caused by something normal. But if you have enough circumstantial evidence in a court of law, you can convict somebody. And I think we have that by now after all the stuff I just covered plus this. Last year, Hurricane Irene on the Mimic, which is the microwaved, uh, uh, yeah, morphed integrated microwave something. Fail. Morphed integrated microwave imagery at Sims. Um, they 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 look for microwave patterns in the atmosphere, and as you can see, there's these trailing lines coming off of there. Very interesting, and it actually seems to affect you know what's going on in the scene there. I mean, you can actually see a difference when that occurs. So, and they have a sh uh, a, a shadow over here as well. If anybody's really paying attention. Following that, this is off the coast of Florida, and then a little further up the coast, it runs into North Carolina, where a NEXRAD station, uh, RAX, flashes the storm. And this was what we saw on IntelliCast. Um, this is it on College of DePage. Um, all of the radar sources around the world, you know, are on the that are available on the net showed the same thing: big, large flash. So, probably not just an error. And we all went on about that for a while. But then we come to today, and we have Hurricane Sandy, exact same thing. Now what I want to point out to you is, you see how there's nothing going on on this side, and there's this big red glowing thing? When it trails away, watch the clouds form behind it. See over here? Then they come back. So that leads me to believe it's not just an anomaly. If it was just like a graphical error, then where do these clouds come from after it disappears? Just saying. So you have that plus, what do you know? We get to North Carolina, and it happens again. There's the flash. So this is two years in a row, two different hurricanes, exact same MO. Flash, mimic, flash, mimic. So then I'm, I'm, I'm looking at um, some of the stuff out there. Um, Harold Saves videos turned me on to HAMP, which led me down this long road. And um, the same day in South Carolina, I was um, taking pictures. And um, this is what I came up with that morning. And I, I really hadn't given it any thought about the hurricane. But when I saw this when I was going to work, I was just blown away. Because, I mean, these are just amazing chemtrails and sun dogs or Kimbo's, however you want to refer to them, but um, look at that. I mean, just impressive chemtrails. And look at that glow. I am not making this up. This has not been altered. I added a little contrast to it just so you can see all of the chemtrails in the background, but you got your typical metal-laden trail of aerosols being spread out vertically um, into the storm. Um, on the the west side of the storm, um, so it's pulled right into the eye. Um, pretty typical stuff, though. Unfortunately, just most people are not aware of it. And finally, let's look over here. This is Sandy up real close. And this is about where I am. And as you can clearly see, this is also pretty typical of hurricanes, don't get me wrong. But, and you know, from the satellite, I wouldn't think anything other than the fact that I saw it in my hometown and took photos. So yeah, there you go. There's that. And these, look at that. You, you get where I'm going with this? So it looks like they laden it with chemicals. Um, they understand that this stuff affects it. And then you have this article, and again, on Press Corps. Um, X-band radar hurricane steering. They're talking about the HARP, the, the SBX, not the HARP. The SBX, the C band X band radar, and it's basically the US Air Force's or and, and Navy's top secret 
um, missile defense radar. It's supposedly part of the THAAD system, T-H-A-A-D, which is a terminal high altitude uh, kinetic weapon. And it, this radar steers the missile to um, a nuclear missile in mid-flight, and then they run into each other, bam. Um, but there's a lot of controversy about this thing being used for uh, tomography for looking underground at uh, nuclear installations as well as possibly weather modification. No details on this thing, by the way. And then we have the space shuttle uh, drone <laughs> that the Air Force runs. Quite possibly a SPS uh, solar power satellite um, laser weapon, energy weapon, microwave weapon. Uh, we don't know what's in it, but if it was up during the hurricane, that would be good to know. I'm going to look into that. Then we have uh, harp status, and you know, people are out to lunch on whether to believe harp status or not. But coincidentally, if you look at this red ring, here's the map. Here's the ring that uh, Harold Say put over it. And if you actually go in and you look real carefully at it, you're going to see those ripple patterns that we all talk about. Pretty interesting stuff. See that? And that's all through the, the harp status update area. And you scroll down, just fine. Up there where they said, ripples. Down here, just fine. Coincidence, you be the judge. See the difference? No harp status update, harp status update. I mean, that is pretty pretty interesting to me, at least. So, when you put it all together, Katrina, 1,833 deaths, Irene, 56, Sandy, 69, 55. Um, it looks like the numbers are down. So, so far, so good. Um, this could be completely coincidental, of course. 81 billion in Katrina, 19 billion Irene, 20 billion Sandy. Um, now, I understand that they want to prevent loss of life and all that, but the bottom line is their plans to own the weather and use it as a weapon are fact. And everything that they learn while doing this is definitely going to lead to one day the Air Force being able to control the weapon, uh, control the weather. And I, for one, do not want to see that day. And I don't think that any country in the world should be allowed to. Um, proceed with this um, this line of research because one day soon um, this information is going to be pocket you know pocket sized power and you're going to have corporate elites dictating to military and you know governments what they should do and they pretty much do now so the thought that uh, they can control the weather as well is very scary to me so one last thing I'm going to throw in there as a possible source of this red line is the Arecibo Space Telescope. You, all, you guys have all seen this in the James Bond movies and other movies. It was destroyed in a hurricane. Um, you know, I, I, I mentioned that earlier. Well, Arecibo heater to be completed and upgraded. I'm pretty sure they've already got that done. And this may be what we've seen the last two years in a row um, with the, the radar anomalies. Um, I don't think it's too much of a gamble to, to, to say that they are involved. Um, not after everything I've read. Um, their intention is clear. Uh, they want to modify it. They want to do everything they can to learn how to control them. And they're going to use every tool they have available to them. And apparently there's a lot of tools that you guys are not aware of. So I made this video and did these two articles to raise awareness about weather modification. It's a, it's, it's a passion for me. Um, I'm deeply concerned for our country and the world. And if people don't step up and start paying attention and really doing something about all of this, pretty soon there's not going to be any clean water left. All of the air above your head will be taxed and be controlled. And if you want fake weather and you want, if you think that man should have the power to control the world then you go ahead and let them continue to do this but I for one will not I say let it grow stay strong everybody and no fear and one more <laughs> knowing is half the battle 
So how about know this stuff and, and tell people?